series of the new year. So happy new year, everybody. Uh, it may be a little late to say that on the 19th of Jan, but I'm saying it anyway. So uh, yeah, happy new year. Um, and it's really nice to see you all here again for our 2020, uh, 2022 CASM seminar series. Um, I'll introduce Adele um, and then I'll hand over to Adele and as ever, um, Adele will speak for, or as all our speakers do, for about half an hour and then there'll be an opportunity um, for questions. So for those of you that don't know, Adele is, uh, she's now an independent consultant uh, with many, many years experience of conducting really top quality, rigorous research um, and giving policy advice on a global scale. Adele is skilled in a whole range of areas, managing um, large scale projects, producing policy tools, research reports, papers, you name it. Um, and Adele's clients have included financial services providers, government authorities um, and international organisations. She's also um, she's also has an ongoing collaboration and advisory role or indeed roles with lots of uh, academic institutions, including, of course, University of Birmingham and CASM. Adele is a CASM advisory member, uh, advisory board member. But more than that, I think, CASM, uh, Adele, it's fair to say that you're a, a long standing friend of CASM and we're very grateful to have you here. Um, Adele's work covers a range of topics relating to personal finance and social inclusion, including the implications of digitalization, appetite for crypto assets, uh, developing strategic approaches to financial education, incentivizing teachers and innovation in education. Um, Adele was responsible for the OECD's international network on financial education from 2015 to 2020. And Adele's formal qualifications include a PhD from the University of Bristol here in the UK. Uh, although Adele now spends most of her time uh, elsewhere, including in uh, ski resorts in sunny France. So we're very jealous. Um, thanks for coming along, Adele. We're really glad to have you here. So um, that is enough from me. As I say, I tried to keep this brief. Um, if everything's OK with you, I'll hand over and, um, um, and you can crack on. Uh Thank you very much, Louise. Uh, I sound very busy. I don't feel that busy, which is great, <laughs> actually. <laughs> but yeah, so currently I'm based in France, uh, but I research uh, topics all over the world. And uh, I'm very lucky to have uh, worked with people all over the world as well. So I try to keep a very international perspective. Uh, what I don't do very often is Zoom meetings. So please bear with me while I go through the technology. So oh, yeah. I'm very excited to be the first person uh, this year to be presenting with CASM. Uh, thank you very much for letting me become the first person. That's always quite exciting. Uh, I'd like to start by saying thank you to CASM because it's a really a two-way relationship and I've appreciated being part of the advisory board, also learning from what's happening in Birmingham. Uh, I'd also like to say thank you to Prudence Foundation and why have I got no slides? That's not <laughs> Okay, that's all right. Uh, there you are. Um, Prudence Foundation were kind enough to let me do this research and to put trust in me to do a full review actually of their materials. So that's, uh, that's really been a, a huge project for me over the last year, as you'll see in the slides. And also I'd like to say thank you to Junior Achievement uh, Asia Pacific because uh, they're the ones that have been implementing the Chiching uh, program that I'm going to talk about. And they've also been very helpful in preparing data, sharing data and answering my questions, which uh, there've been plenty. So you'll see uh, my opening slide starts with pictures. Uh, I think um, that's really one of the key things. This is about financial education, but it's particularly interesting because it's using entertainment. Um, these are the main characters that are in the Cha Ching videos that have been uh, incorporated into teaching materials. So you uh, will see them from time to time in my slides today. So I'm actually going to give you a very brief background into Cha Ching and also into the review process, give you a few um, insights into my observations about the materials. It's a very detailed report, uh, primarily an internal report for the benefit of Prudence Foundation going forward, but a few kind of top findings for you to take away. And then I'll talk more about the quantitative uh, analysis and results. Primarily, I'm gonna be talking about data from 2017 to 2020, uh, with the exception of the teacher data where I only use the most recent teacher data. 
And the Ching curriculum was implemented in Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam. Uh, it does also reach other countries, but those are the countries with data that I'm going to cover today. So let's have a little look at the background. So Cha Ching Financial Education Program or curriculum is part of Prudence Foundation's uh, flag flagship financial education program. It was designed for seven to 12 year olds. And the idea is that it provides them with the foundation skills that they need so that when they come to make financial decisions, uh, they have the, the underlying skills. And it's actually been running in one form or another for 10 years. Uh, the Prudence Foundation itself is part of uh, Prudential PLC in Asia and Africa. It's their community investment arm, and it aims to do all kinds of things, including education, health and safety. And there's the logo below. And I just like to point out that the wording on these slides comes from Prudence Foundation. But the analysis and interpretation that I'm talking about is mine, uh, and it is an independent uh, analysis. So the uh, resources that I'm going to talk about are actually teaching resources, but they're part of a, a bigger set. So there are 18 educational cartoons. Each one lasts around about three minutes long, and they're actually played on TV across Asia. So they reach 35 million households. Uh, they were developed uh, in partnership with Cartoon Network, but also in partnership with an educational psychologist. And that combination means that they both educate educating and entertaining. They really are the edutainment that people talk about. Uh, the nice thing now, and the reason that this evaluation is so interesting is that some of those cartoons have actually been incorporated into a school curriculum with teaching guides. So this has been developed in partnership with Junior Achievement, who I mentioned earlier. And the idea is that it's a model that's led by teachers. So first of all, the teachers are trained and over 15,000 teachers have been trained. And then the teachers reach their students in their schools uh, and over 800,000 students have received teaching from this curriculum since 2016. Uh, some of the other resources include uh, um, facilities for people to learn from home, which have become incredibly important over the pandemic, sadly, and also online educational games. And uh, Emma Burroughs, who is, I believe, on, online right now, is also working on many other things at the moment. So Cha Ching continues to evolve and meet the, the modern needs of, of young people. The curriculum is designed around four concepts. Um, earn, save, spend, donate. And the definitions here are the definitions that were in the materials that I reviewed. Uh, so for earn, we see it's, uh, they're talking about receiving income, saving uh, money for later for short-term and long-term goals, spending as the use of money to buy things or services, and donate not just about money, but about items as well as time. Uh, the teachers receive training uh, as part of a comprehensive teaching and learning package. So they have two days where they're actually trained, but they also get given a package that they can use uh, repeatedly with their classes. Uh, the materials that they receive include lesson plans. They also obviously have access to the videos that I talked about briefly. Uh, for those of them that are unable to play videos, perhaps because there's no electric or no means of uh, uh, presenting these videos, there's also comics uh, that can be shared with the children. There are activity cards and student booklets. There are also some take home activities for the students and uh, there's the test papers so that the students can take a test before and after participating. And I think it's really important to remember that this is comprehensive, that yes, there's the videos, but actually the teachers are given much more than simply the videos. The lessons are designed to last about 45 minutes and they include um, an introduction and then the children watch the video, they have a class discussion, they have group activities, and then they have a summary session. And sometimes they're told about homework. And again, there's a structure. So each lesson has a similar structure, even though it obviously has different content. Similarly, each story within the video or if necessary within the comment uh, comic, uh, illustrates the decision-making processes that the young people in the band who are playing the music in the cartoons uh, go through, the strategies that they use to achieve positive outcomes, 
and they really show how they learn new skills and behaviours to achieve those outcomes. So what did I do in this process? Um, really, the review was looking at four aspects. So the documentation itself, all of those materials I've just described, the topics, the way that the curriculum actually covers financial literacy and whether that's good practice, uh, the teacher training process, uh, some feedback from teachers about the training process, also the documents that are used for accreditation, which occurs after the teachers have been teaching the curriculum for one year, and then the data, so the pre and post tests from the students to uh, analyze quantitatively the outcomes and impact. And uh, I used various different approaches to do this. So I mapped Cha Ching against the good practice approaches uh, in the US, in the UK, uh, international approaches, approaches in Hong Kong, etc. I also spent a lot of time discussing with implementing partners and reviewing annual reports, uh, looking at evidence uh, from as many different sources as possible. I, I spent many a happy hour sat outside watching the videos, uh, enjoying the entertainment uh, with my granddaughter, who also enjoyed them very much. Um, read the stories and the transcripts to, to get a good sense of the language that was being used and whether it was consistent with the topics themselves and compared the story content and the teaching materials to make sure that there was internal consistency in the delivery of the lessons. And the yellow box sounds like the easy part compared, but actually also spent a lot of time preparing and analyzing the data, uh, which was primarily quantitative, but also included verbatim comments, fortunately translated into English. So let me give you a few observations of the curriculum. Um, these are my observations from having read through all that. I think one of the things that really struck me was that the curriculum manages to cover sensitive topics such as needs and wants and also donating effectively. So the data shows that these, uh, these topics are covered effectively and my review of the materials show that there's sensitivity in, in the way that they're discussed. It's not normative. There's no, uh, these are needs and these are wants. Uh, the story, for example, talks about band members needing um, speakers. Now, ordinary people in an ordinary home don't need speakers, but it's quite important if you're a band. So it's very clearly not normative. And I think those messages come across time and time again in the curricula and show the, the design uh, effectiveness, if you like. I think uh, for the age group that's been targeted, the definitions, whilst they're accurate, they could probably be simplified. Uh, there's a little caveat here because the definitions are also very useful for the teachers. And we know that uh, evidence from other research shows that teachers are often not confident in their own financial literacy. So a little bit more information for teachers is no bad thing. But when talking about saving, for example, for children, talking about realizing short and long-term goals is probably a little bit more technical than they need. We know that the stories uh, provide children with the opportunity to predict what happens next. And that seems to be a really good tool to help them to, to think about problem solving in real life situations. We know that financial literacy has to be about applying your knowledge in real situations and not just knowing something in the abstract. Uh, the benefit of music and catchy lyrics, I don't think will come as a surprise to anybody. The fact that you can repeat uh, the same message several times and that it makes it much easier for children to remember what they heard uh, seems to be having an impact. And I think also, as I mentioned before, the fact that the story is about realistic situations is, is helping the students to learn. So some quantitative results. Uh, first of all, here's a few numbers. So you can see we're talking about a large data set. Uh, for each student, we have information. We have their date of birth, their gender. We know which school they went to and which school year they were in. We also know uh, what their scores or their financial literacy was uh, before participating in the Cha Ching curriculum and also afterwards. They also give quite a lot of general feedback, but I won't use that so much today. So in total, there's over 200,000 uh, students, uh, all with matched pre and post tests. Uh, the age of the students varies by country. 
there's always an age range, but actually sometimes there are very few students at the extreme. Uh, so for example, in Malaysia, almost every child was 11 when they participated. Uh, the youngest or the, the lowest grade was grade three in Indonesia primarily. And then we see we go up to grade five in Malaysia. Um, the uh, analysis that uh, I undertook on the data is, is not really surprising uh, for those of you that use quantitative data. So starting by looking at specific uh, responses to specific questions before and after participating, uh, creating financial literacy scores by looking at those questions that are basically knowledge, those that are basically attitudes and those that are basically behavior and then analyzing those by country and gender and age. I won't be reporting all that today. I'm gonna to focus primarily on, uh, on aggregate data. Uh, there was also the opportunity to undertake regression analysis, uh, controlling for the pretest scores and other factors. Uh, I did some statistical modeling to predict the likely outcomes of students using their pretest scores uh, if they hadn't participated in Cha-Ching and also calculated some effect sizes to try to compare against uh, the other literature. So very quickly, if we look at knowledge, uh, these are responses to specific questions, uh, combining the data from all five countries and across the different years. And we see that in general, the before scores are already fairly high, or the percentage of students correctly answering these questions, I should say, is already fairly high but it does increase after participating in the programme. So we see some general indication that, uh, that they understand these concepts better after participating. I flag at the bottom of this slide that actually the students in Malaysia could, could answer the first two questions. Uh, almost all of them answered them correctly. So there was very little uh, room for manoeuvre. <clears throat> Similarly, we see an improvement in attitudes. Uh, there are three questions that look at students' attitudes and they use a Likert scale. So we have some sense again of a change in attitude. Uh, we would say moving towards a more positive attitude towards uh, donating, for example, towards uh, earning money and also to setting uh, personal goals. Um, interestingly, we saw that there was an even more positive attitude towards donating as a result of Cha-Ching uh, in 2020. I wondered if that was uh, something to do with COVID-19, but uh, there's, there's no way we can, we can be certain of that. Uh, we also saw for some reason that after participating students in Indonesia tend to uh, become less convinced that it took hard work to, uh, to earn money. So don't quite know what that means without qualitative data. Uh, we asked students, we, I didn't ask them, the questionnaire asked students whether or not they felt that their behavior had changed after participating. And you see basically a mess. Some students did, some didn't, in some countries lots did, in some countries a few did. And it's a really good indication of why those kind of questions don't tell you exactly what you want to know. Uh, if we look at the, the next uh, slide, we see, for example, that typically students were already reporting fairly positive behaviours uh, before participating. So we do see an increase in positive be behaviours as a result of oh, after participating. I can't actually say it's as a result, but it's not at all the same as the students uh, seem to think it was uh, when we asked when, when the survey asked them. There are some gender gaps, uh, they're quite complex. So there's one slide here, but uh, there's, uh, you'll see, I'll talk a little bit about the regression results as well. So in general, there's a gender gap in favor of girls. So girls tended to have higher knowledge, uh, more positive attitudes and behavior. And we see that that gap decreases slightly and is only uh, statistically significant in terms of knowledge. Uh, after participating in Malaysia and Thailand. So there's a gap, the gap remains to some extent, but it reduces and becomes insignificant in most of the countries. Uh, 
This slide shows you uh, the predicted scars six weeks after the pretest if the students hadn't participated. Uh, we didn't have a lot of data to, uh, to make these predictions, but one of the things we had was age. Um, we know that students typically achieve more as they get older. So uh, it did turn out to be significant indeed. And modeling, we see a very small expected increase in knowledge as a result of uh, being six weeks older uh, from 1.89 to 1.9 out of three. Uh, but we actually see an even larger increase as a result of participating in touching. So students post partition participating scars are higher than we would expect uh, given what we knew about them in the pretest. And that's the same for knowledge, attitudes and behavior. And then looking at effect sizes and comparing these with a recent paper by Kaiser and Menkoff, uh, a meta-analysis actually of financial education in schools. I've given the date here as 2020. The paper actually online is 2019 and 2020. So I'm not entirely sure which one you would choose to look at. But basically what you see is that over the five countries and over the various years, uh, the Cheqing effect size is not 0.4. Uh, Kaiser Minkoff find that in developed uh, economies in schools, financial education is typically changing knowledge by 0.39. And in developing uh, economies, it's much lower at 0.14. Here, I've also got um, the uh, standard, no, sorry, the effect sizes for attitudes and behavior, which are smaller, but still relatively large compared to the change in knowledge that was found by Kaiser Minkoff. So the regression show us that once we control for other things, we see a larger increase in knowledge in recent years. We see a larger increase in knowledge for girls than boys and for older students. In terms of attitude, uh, somewhat similar, uh, a larger increase in recent years, more for girls than boys. But this time, we see the attitudes change more among the younger students than the older ones. In terms of behavior, behavior was uh, changing more in the early years. Um, it's changed more for girls and boys once we control for other things. There was no real change uh, based on age. We can also uh, incorporate school data and teacher data to a certain extent. I know from the data set which school the students went to, but I don't know which teacher they had. So this slide talks only about the uh, average school um, information and the students post test scores. So we can see, for example, that students post test scores were higher in terms of knowledge and behavior among older students, that they were higher in schools where there were more students on attitude and behavior. And in schools where the average pre scores were high, the post scars were also higher. We also see that in schools with larger proportions of boys, there's a larger increase in financial outcomes. Uh, I haven't tried to explain these findings at the moment. And one of the reasons for that is that the data that we have for the schools comes from the teachers. And I'm not entirely sure whether these are um, averages across all school students or only school students that participated in Cha-Ching. So they're tentative findings rather than absolute concrete findings. Uh, there was a complicated, detailed, there's a better word, a detailed survey uh, of the teachers which provides a a lot of information about their experience of teaching. I looked at this for just one year, the last year. It includes uh, information from over 3,000 teachers, and it shows uh, that 
there's a, an association between enthusiasm and age. So younger teachers tend to be more enthusiastic about teaching the Chiching curriculum, uh, according to the regression analyses, and they're more likely to want to teach the course again. Uh, it doesn't seem that there's a significant difference by the number of children that they were teaching. Um, or whether they were combining the Cha Ching lessons uh, rather than just teaching one at a time. And there was no significant difference by gender. Almost all of the teachers felt that the materials uh, were appropriate for the students that they were teaching. This tiny percentage of 4% that, that felt that the materials were perhaps not entirely suited for their students were mostly teaching the younger students. Um, and it was perhaps just a little bit fast for them, I don't know, but I suspect that teaching over six weeks with the younger students may be harder than teaching over six weeks with older students. So what can we conclude from all this? Um, we can conclude that I'm going very fast through what was a very long uh, research project, but let me give you some general ideas. The comparative analysis of the curriculum has shown that uh, it covering the topics that are most frequently identified in the literature as being foundational financial literacy information for children. It's consistent with good practices, in other words. The, the four topics are the topics that are most frequently um, covered uh, among this age group. I can conclude that the programme has certainly gone uh, way beyond most in terms of data collection, particularly the fact that there's pre and post data that's matched by student uh, that's really quite exceptional. Uh, in future, I, I'd really like to see the, uh, uh, the creation of a control group. I understand that it's difficult, and especially when there are so many students receiving uh, the training, it's very difficult to find some that aren't but it does help us to, to be even more certain of the findings. Uh, I think some qualitative research will help to unpick some of those things that I've uh, presented with caveats. And I also think that it would be really interesting to know more about uh, homework. Homework is provided, or at least the teachers have the option to provide homework. At the moment, the homework isn't returned to class and uh, integrated into the next lesson. So maybe that's something that could be done. But more interesting for me would be to know how that homework is impacting on the household, whether it's having an impact on family, um, uh, whether parents are learning from it or curious about it, et cetera. Uh, I think we can conclude from this that using six entertaining videos and the teaching uh, materials have improved financial literacy. Of course, this is not actually causal, but it's a very large data set. We find in statistical differences, we find inconsistent differences in the direction that we would anticipate. And I think uh, as confidence levels go, there seems to be a very strong association. I also wanted to flag the importance of partnerships. Uh, this is not really part of the research, but one of the things that comes across very clearly is that to reach that many students, one of Prudence Foundation's strengths is that they've worked with appropriate stakeholders. In particular, they got buy-in from ministries of education earlier on. They continue to work closely with the ministries and also with junior achievement. And they've drawn on the, the knowledge and experience of academics, et cetera, when necessary. Um, I don't think that a project of this size could have been done any other way. And I think it's really something to take away for, for other people trying to do something similar. So I'm going to stop there. Uh, thank you very much. I've put my email address here. You're welcome to contact me directly or contact me through CASM if that's easier. I, I ask you not to cite this. It's not public or published yet. Obviously, you've heard it and it's going to be recorded. But just in case we do make any last minute changes, I prefer that we don't have uh, multiple citations at this stage. So please get in touch if you intend to. And there's a couple of characters looking happy at the end. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you, Adele. If you could stop.